I guarantee, absolutely guarantee, double dog T, that your retirement plan projection is wrong. Okay, baby cakes, what's wrong there? And it's just the same old story I said a thousand times a Sunday on this channel, and I'll continue to hammer home. All right, so we got, this is from fizz.org. This is physics, man. No, it's not actually physics. It's, other, it's under other social sciences. I hate the idea of science and economics being labeled because it's not a science, a soft science maybe, but certainly not a hard science. No matter how the economics profession tries, business is absolutely not a science. By the way, fizz.org, you don't want to argue with Einstein, do you? Let me show you something real quick. Let's, uh, Captain Lorentz, uh, <laughs> And we got completing Einstein's homework on special relativity in electromagnetism. Interesting. Maxwell, J James Clerk Maxwell. Interesting. You don't want to argue with science, do you? Um, let's, let's just uh, let's, uh, manipulating with rents. Interesting. So let's type in, uh, I don't know, we'll type in Maxwell. Why not? Um, actually, let's type in Poincor. I don't even know how to pronounce it in French. This is uh, no results for that guy. What? That's crazy. Let's type in, uh, who else we're going to type in? Have anything for point core. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but uh, I typed in, uh, what did I type in? Uh, Maxwell, James Clerk Maxwell, new quantum computing feed is a modern twist on 150 old. Oh, let's type in Michelson Morley. Michelson. Let's see what they got. They got to have something on Michelson Morley. Uh, See. Yep, Mike's a moral experiment for electrons, quantum information techniques used to explore fundamental physics. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure what Tanzania has to do with that. It's interesting, though. Michelson Morley. Uh, last, last one, let's type in a uh, Kip Thorne because he's uh, the newer guy who won the Nobel Prize. He's uh, still a big believer in relativity. Um, uh, proving that quantum entanglement is real. Researcher answered question about historical. All right, and we got uh, Kip Thorne. All right, there we go. First discovery, Thorn. All right. Anyway, so you don't want to uh, be against physics, do you? Because, I mean, obviously, physicists know everything. Look, I'm being facetious. I get it. I, I, it's just one of those things that the orthodox has to be challenged all the time in every aspect of your life. Never succumb to the orthodox. I cannot stress this enough. I don't care if it's from physics. I don't care as for retirement planning. The orthodox always and forever needs to be challenged and has never been answered, i.e. we know for a fact this out of the other. I'm just telling you right now, man, you have to challenge everything. All right, so in this regard, let's go back. Rand Corporation, which is clown, we all know that's part of the big cabal, I get it. But it's weird that they're letting this out again and again and again. It's the same people, Michael Hurd and Rottweiler, is that her name? Uh, Rod Wetter, Rod Wetter, Susan Rod Wetter. Anyway, uh, this is a dateline of December 8th, 2022. American spending found to decline consistently after the age of 65 again and again. And it's these guys, Michael Hurd and Rod, Rod Rod Wetter, Susan Suzanne Rod Wetter, They've been studying this for years and years and years and years and years. I'm telling you, I've been reading these guys for a freaking almost 20 years now. I mean, I just, Americans' personal spending drops consistently after the age of 65 among the both the affluent and those with lower le levels of financial resources, according to a new Rand Corporation report. Michael Hurd and Susan Rodweller, Rodwetter, I get called Rottweiler. Rot Roe Wetter found that real spending, net of inflation, adjusted um, adjusted for inflation, a decline for both single and couple households at an annual rate of 1.7 for single and 2.4% for couples. That's net of inflation. Real means net of inflation. And they say real spending adjusted for inflation. That's kind of Panera bread, bread, bread. The findings contradict traditional wisdom that spending will be constant or even increase as older age. And suggest that individuals and couples could spend more early in retirement. The research provides new insights about spending during traditional retirement years and should help households, policymakers, and financial advisors better determine adequate savings rate during their working life. The researchers say that spending declines broadly, including among those in the highest wealth group, suggesting that the decline may not be related to economic position, but to other issues such as declining health care in older years. Declining health in older years, excuse me. 
There has been extensive research on the importance of saving for retirement, but much less attention has been paid to spending in retirement. Heard and wrote. Rottweiler analyzed long-term information about total household spending, and they've been doing it from 2005 to 2019 using the HRS, the Health and Retirement Study from the University of Michigan. Oh, right there, they talk about it. A population representative survey that has been fielded for more than two decades. They estimated two-year rates of a change of household spending, which was adjusted for inflation. Using those rates of change, researchers constructed life cycle trajectories of spending from age 65 to advanced old age. They conducted separate analysis for single and married people. And for each, they stratified by quantiles of wealth as observed when the individual was in the age of 65 to 69. The initial wealth stratification is important because lower wealth households may have different spending trajectories because they have more restricted economic circumstances. Yet they found that the rates of decline were substantially independent of wealth position. This independence led to the interpretation that the declining path is unlikely to be caused by tightening budget constraints because even those in the top quartile who are less constrained exhibit a declining path. It's crazy. While spending on health care increases with age, the increase is not large enough to offset the decline observed for those type uh, for those uh, to, uh, decline for observed for those other types. They found that household budget shares spent on gifts and donations increase with age, which suggests the economic position on average does not deteriorate uh, with age, even as total spending declines. They said the findings should prompt changes in the way Americans do financial planning for the retirement years. I freaking, oh, it's so, ah. and again, this guy, Ty Bernicke, should win the Nobel Prize for freaking financial planning, whatever the hell it is. Um, you, may be you may be able to retire earlier than you think. This is in 2009, but right here, how does spending needs evolve during retirement, Ty Bernicke. And the thing that pissed me off about this guy, Jonathan Clements, is he said, oh, well, I saw the article, but uh, you know, this he was used to be the guy in the Wall Street Journal, which um, I'm drawing a blank the guy's name who took it over, David Wessel. No, it's not him. I can't remember. Anyway, another English guy. It's weird. Anyway, but, uh, Jonathan Clements, who has a big platform at the Wall Street Journal, he said, oh, it's only because people have less to spend. They're running out of money. I, I just, there's no evidence of that. There wasn't. In fact, the evidence is the exact opposite. Anyway, this got me all, let's I tell you what, man, let's, uh, let's look at this. This, this got me fired up back then because I, I said, wait a second, if Bernicke is right, then everybody else is wrong. And then I started looking into it more and I said, not only is Bernicke right, he's explicitly right with any research you look at. And so let's go back. It made me so mad because it was such a flippant observation, not even observation, the flippant uh, write-off of Clements on Ty Bernicke, where he said, oh, yeah, because people run out of money. And yet, even in his own book in 2016, and this is a great freaking book, by the way. I'll put a link in the show notes. This is a great book. He says, over the past 50 years, we've seen two changes in the way America spends according to the uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis in 2011. First, we're devoting far less of our income to life's basics. Clothing, footwear, food, and beverages account for just 11% of spending uh, down from, in 2009, down from 27.4 in 1959. Spending on health care, financial services, and insurance has soared. Healthcare rose from 5.9% of total spending in 1959 to 19.7% in 2009. This includes hospital costs, doctor visits, prescription drugs, and eyeglasses, whatnot. Much of this cost wasn't paid by the consumers, though, but by insurance, i.e. Medicare, Medicaid, and your private insurance. Let's keep going. Here he talks about the 80% rule in retirement planning spending. And again, this is Clements. And he used to have a huge audience. He probably still does. He's a humble dollar guy. One rule of thumb says the, you need 80% of your pre-retirement income. Why the 20% drop? Because you're no longer saving 10%. You're no longer paying 7.65 in FICA and income taxes. It turns out, however, that many retirees are living on far less than 80% of their final salary. 
T. Rowe Price Group surveyed relatively affluent retirees found out those retirees on average were living on 66% of their pre-retirement income. And they report and uh, and they reported being quite content. <sighs> Add it up, and you may find you can comfortably retire on fifty to sixty percent of your final salary. Yeah, you think there, John? The biggest of confirmation, of course, is this book I've talked about a million times. I cut myself yesterday. I'm smoking a turkey, and I took the thing off. I cut myself. It was pretty deep. I was bleeding. Yeah. Anyway, so this right here, a contrarian perspective, the essential retirement guide by Frederick Vitesse. I don't even know how to pronounce the name. But anyway, I'll put a link in the show notes. That's that's if retirement planning is on your mind, that's a must read. You get spent to the end too by Clements and uh, not Clements, so Kotlikoff and Scott Burns. I've talked about it a million times on Sunday. So basically, what happened with me is I read Bernicke in the Journal for Financial Planning. This article, dead link. So anyway, but uh, you can look up Ty Bernicke. I'm not going to do it for you. You can do it up. Anyway, that guy needs to uh, get the Nobel Prize for financial planning. And then somehow I came across this. Spend till the end. I don't even remember how I came across it. Just by God's glory, I guess. Um, and I, I it was probably 2009, 10, I think. And it just it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, we've been doing it wrong. We've been doing it all wrong. And then you factor in that your Social Security is adjusted for inflation. So the amount you see today is not the amount you actually get when you take Social Security. It's just as of today without factoring any cost of living adjustments or future average wage increases. It's, you're not going to get 2800 bucks if your Social Security statement says that today. If you're 52, you're going to get more than that. And I said, and it just hit me. I was like, man, we, we've been scaring the living bejesus out, of, bejesus, bejesus out of people without even knowing what we're doing because it's all based on ignorance. Anyway, so the point being, then then I started doing more and more research, and I got you know ticked off of these negative Nellies saying, "No, you you're going to spend more and more and more." I said, "Where's the evidence?" And I'm still saying that to this day. That's why I'm going to get ready to go here to Panera Bread, drink some coffee, and finish working on my book, uh, "Relax and Retire: Debunking the Inflation Myth." Because everyone's like, "Oh, well, yeah, but inflation." I'm like, "It's crazy." So if we go back to Michael Hurd and Susan Rottweiler, uh, they've been writing on this for years and years and years and years man here's 2003 right there 2003 these guys 2006 these guys crush big fans these guys bernicke i want to say jensen Holmes. pretty cool ty bernicke named forbes 2022 best in-state wealth manager in wisconsin well, good. Uh, freaking that dude kicks ass man way to go team bernicke all right that guy crushes. Anyway, so uh, ooh, your mutual funds are killing your returns. Interesting. Um, I want to go back to here it is. Here's the uh, Reality Retirement Planning uh, FPA Financial Planning Association, the Journal for Financial Planning, which I used to be a hardcore member of until they went woke and started preaching CRT, uh, critical race theory. Can't have anything to do with CRT. It's, it's basic. It's racism on its top, man. I will not promote any kind of racism. It's no different than liberation theology that the Jesuits pursue and all that stuff. It's just all, it's not based on God. It's based on, oh, uh, revenge, essentially. It's crazy. Anyway, so he had talked about, hold on a second. Very interesting. He, he talks about Harry Dent's book from 1998. And look, I've, uh, I never read that book, The Roaring 2000s. I know that Harry Dent has been for a long time now, at least the last 15 years, a very big uh, negative Nelly on stuff. But Harry Dent's the first, one of the first to talk about this retirement spending declines. But there's a, you're right here. Tachino, more of this research corresponds to an article by Tachino and Salzman, which concludes that the current models used for retirement planning overstate the amount of financial resources needed for retirement. This is 1999. Here's Ken Tachino of Widener, Widener, Widener University. I, I'm not going to find the art, the article. I'm just going to look real quick, but, uh, Oh, planning for he got a book too. Planning for retirement needs. All right, cool. Plan, oh, man, let's take a look at this. We got four reviews, man. Is this the same guy? Planning for retirement needs. 1997. Whoa. Hey, all right. So, just <sighs> if you're using the tried and true and false assumption that your spending is going to be adjusted each and every year with inflation. I'm begging you to show me the research of any research. There's one tiny article in Italy. That's it that I'm aware of. Show it to me, man. 
And if you can't show it to me, why do we continue to do this? Well, it's better be safe than sorry. Not if your life is on the line because your work is literally killing you. Hey, I'll put links in the show notes. If you're not getting these books, I don't, it's, you know, all these, for me, these books are critical. If you're not getting them, I don't know what to tell you, man. Love your thoughts. We'll see you. Oh, you know, 